In today's video, we are gonna compare the Bronco Sport against the competition and see how the Bronco Sport lines up. I do have a special announcement though. My store is finally open. It's revmatshop.com. Right now I've got two t-shirts. I got this one that I'm wearing right here, which you've seen in a lot of videos. And I've got a very special limited edition. It is this yellow one. There's only four of them. This is my SEMA shirt. I took this to SEMA with my Supra. I interviewed Tavares. I interviewed Rutledge Wood with it. So if you're interested in that, please go ahead and support the channel. I did a comparison video with the Bronco versus the Wrangler. That's gonna be linked down below, but this is the Bronco Sport. This is the one based on the Ford Escape. Now remember, the Bronco Sport is not out yet. Neither is the Bronco. We are here in mid-April. We don't really have a launch date yet, so this Let's just enter the speculation zone for a moment here, and you can go ahead and criticize that all you want, but this is the speculation zone, so please leave your comments down below too. I want this to be kind of a fun, interactive thing. Let's hang out together on a Saturday and just, you know, shoot the stuff about the Bronco Sport. This is gonna be a pretty geeky video because we are gonna be looking at specs and doing this comparison. So I've done a lot of research for this and I've got, I think, a pretty good idea of what the Bronco Sport pricing is gonna look at. I think it's gonna be a little bit more expensive than what a lot of people think. So there are a couple things that we are pretty sure we're gonna get with the Bronco and one of them is the engine combination packages. So we're gonna get two engines. We're gonna get a 1.5 liter, a three cylinder. It's the Dragon engine. It makes 180 horsepower, 177 pound feet of torque. That of course is directly from the Ford Escape. And let's look at the Jeep Compass. So the Jeep Compass, which is the vehicle that someone is insisting that we do the comparison, it has a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated engine, makes 180 horsepower, 175 pounds-feet of torque. So all these vehicles that we're talking about, they're all pretty similar in terms of power with a couple of exceptions. Now, when it comes to the transmission choices, there really aren't any choices in the Bronco Sport. It looks like we're gonna get an eight-speed automatic. That's probably it. In the Jeep Compass, we've got a six-speed automatic and a six-speed manual. So you do have a little bit more choices there. And let's talk about interior volume. Now, all these specs that I pulled down. These are all directly off the manufacturer's websites and the specs that they have provided to the press. So that's where I'm pulling this information from. If you see something a little bit different that might be updated on the website, it is what it is. But these are all 2020 information and I spent quite a bit of time pulling up the, these specs to make sure they are pretty accurate. So in terms of interior volume, the Jeep Compass 126.7 cubic feet. The Bronco Sport, well, we don't really know yet because that's the whole problem with the Bronco Sport. It is a little bit speculative, but we're gonna look at the, the Bronco Sport and compare it to the Ford Escape. Let's talk about the Ford Escape because the Ford Escape is really important here. The Ford Escape is the chassis that the Bronco Sport is based on. Now, the Ford Escape is a pretty new redesign. Uh, it's only been in production for a short period of time. And the Ford Escape, the interior volume is only 104 cubic feet. Again, this is according to the Ford spec sheets. So here's the big question with the interior volume, how big is the Bronco gonna be compared to the Escape? That's a huge question. Obviously it's based on the same chassis, but it's not exactly the same chassis. There's gonna be some stretching or some shortening or some widening or some narrowing. All those things are gonna come into play as they repackage the Bronco Sport it is gonna be positioned as much more of an off-road vehicle than the Ford Escape. The Ford Escape is kind of a little bit more smooth, a little bit more luxurious, a little bit more car-like. The Bronco is definitely positioned a little bit more truck-like. You can see here from the interior leak shots that we got a couple days ago, it definitely has a little bit of an F-150 vibe. It's a little bit chunky, so there's a definite difference in positioning between the Ford Escape and the Bronco. So the wheelbase, the wheelbase on the Ford Escape is 106.7 inches. That is what that is. The Jeep Compass, 103.8. So it definitely is a little bit of a shorter vehicle. 
Again, we don't know if the Bronco is really going to be longer or shorter than the Escape. Let me know down below. I know there's been a lot of speculation on uh, Bronco Sport Forum and Bronco 6G and so forth, but I think based on the photographs, it's really hard to tell what the wheelbase is actually going to be because you're looking at some photographs that could easily be off by two, three, four, five, six inches. It's impossible to say what the wheelbase is really going to be. We are in the speculation zone here, so please feel free to comment down below. So the length of the Jeep Compass, 173 inches. We don't know what the Bronco Sport is going to be, but the Ford Escape is 180.5. I think the Bronco is going to have a shorter overhang on the front and the rear, so it's going to have a better angle of approach and departure, so it's going to be more off-road capable. The Ford Escape is not really aimed to be an off-road vehicle. It does have four-wheel drive, but it's not an off-road vehicle. That's not the way they are positioning it. The Jeep Compass, like I say, 173 inches in length. It is supposed to be very off-road capable. That's the way Jeep positions it. The height, the height of all these vehicles is about the same. It's between 64.6 and 68.6. I'm going to say the Bronco Sport is going to be 68 inches high. The width, the Jeep Compass, 80 inches. The Ford Escape is 74, so it's definitely a little bit narrower. I think the Bronco Sport's going to be pretty similar width to the uh, to the Escape. I looked at the curb weight of all these vehicles. They're all actually very, very, very similar, and perhaps that is one of the best indicators of how competitive these vehicles are together, including the price. The Jeep Compass is 33.27. The Ford Escape. 3474. The Bronco, I'm just going to say it's going to come in at 3,400 pounds. I picked all of these weights based on 4x4 or all-wheel drive configuration, so it's a little bit more of an apples to apples. Ground clearance, obviously a little bit more is a little bit better if you're talking about an off-road vehicle. The Jeep Compass, 8.2 inches. Ford Escape, 7.8. I don't really think that's competitive. It's not off-road. I'm going to guess the Bronco Sport is going to be in the 8-inch range. And I'm sort of guessing at the base uh, vehicles here too. Oh yeah, where are these assembled? So the Jeep Compass is assembled in Toluca, Mexico. The Bronco Sport is going to be in Hermosillo, Mexico. So it is not domestically built. There's only one vehicle on this list which is domestically built, and that's even a little bit of a stretch. We'll get to that in a second. The Jeep Compass does come in at $23,780. I pulled these prices off the manufacturer's websites. Uh, there might be some shipping and destination charges in there that perhaps I missed. Feel free to correct me on that, but that is the base price on that. Let's talk about the Jeep Renegade, which I think is very close competition. Now, in terms of the engines, it has two engines, and the Jeep Renegade and the Jeep Compass are actually, they're kind of similar vehicles, but they're, I mean, they're kind of not. So with the Renegade, the base price is 24,120, again, with four x four configuration. 1.3 liter engine turbo, which is actually the upgraded engine, and that's 177 horsepower, about 210 pounds feet of torque. The website, the public website says 200, not really sure on that. And there's another engine you can get, which is the 2.4 liter, making 180 horsepower, 175 pounds feet of torque. That one's not turbo, so that's the base engine. Now, the Jeep Renegade only comes with a nine speed automatic transmission. Interior volume is less, it's 118.6 cubic feet. So between the Renegade and the Compass, we've got a pretty big styling difference. The Renegade is a little bit more, I would say, a little bit more truck-like, a little bit less smooth. The Compass is a little bit smoother looking, but you've got two pretty similar vehicles. Jeep is definitely filling out all the niches in their off-road line. Now, here's another one that I haven't talked about too much before, but I think is actually a very, very close competitor. It's the Toyota RAV4. Now, the price is more expensive. That starts at $27,350, again, for the most inexpensive 4x4 or all-wheel drive version that I could configure. We've got one engine, which is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine makes 203 horsepower, 184 pounds-feet of torque. So you can see an engine trend, and most of these vehicles are making around 180-ish to 200-ish horsepower, and they're all about the same weight. That sort of puts them in the same class. They're all in the mid to higher $20,000 price range. In terms of transmissions, you got an 8-speed automatic only. 
I would argue, and I think Toyota would argue, that the fact that it does not have a turbo is gonna make it more reliable long-term. Obviously, you can debate that. There's less moving parts, so something to talk about. The RAV4 interior volume is 98.9 .9 cubic feet, and that places it very close to the Ford Escape. Wheelbase, 105.9. Ford Escape, 106.7, so it seems to be pretty close. The length is 180.9 inches, so it doesn't have, it's got a little bit of overhang front and back. The angle of approach and departure are not probably gonna be quite as good as the Jeep or the more off-road focused vehicles, but Toyota does say you can take this off-road, especially with the TRD package. That's a big bump up in price, by the way. And this one is built in Canada. It's built in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. I would sort of argue that's domestic, but maybe not. There's only one other vehicle that is built in North America on this list. And that, of course, is the Ford Escape, which is built in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, so here is something interesting about the price point. Here's my theory about the price on the Ford Bronco Sport. The Ford Escape, the base price that I could find is $28,275 in the 4x4 configuration. I pulled this price off of the Ford website today. It's April 25th. We're obviously in the middle of this whole pandemic situation, so there's incentives here. There's incentives in the order of $1,625. But if we just look at the base price, $26,385. You add in the destination of $1,245, an acquisition fee of $645, you've got 28275 So just to compare apples to apples, I think what we're gonna do here is just call that the base price. So it's gonna be 28275 So let's talk about the Bronco Sport for a second. Ford has said that the Bronco Sport is going to be a little bit more expensive than the Ford Escape. So when you got the Ford Escape 4x4, which is not really an off-road capable vehicle, it does have all-wheel drive option. We got the Bronco Sport, which definitely is very off-road capable. We're talking about a base price. If it's gonna be higher, I don't see how it can be less than $29,000, perhaps even $29,500, something like that. So yesterday, or rather in my last video where I was talking about the Bronco Sport, and I said $30,000, and then I was correcting myself in the comments. I'm gonna sort of go back on that. I've reevaluated my opinion. I think that it's going to start at over $29,000. I think it's gonna be very close to 30, actually. Ford is positioning this as a really off-road capable vehicle. It's a little bit more truck-like. It's, it's definitely not the Escape. So considering that the Escape starts at 28, that is my guess. There's gonna be some incentives most likely, probably not at the first round of buying. You're probably not gonna get a lot of incentives if you gonna wanna be one of the first buyers, but who knows what's gonna happen in this marketplace. Maybe you will, maybe you'll be able to get it for, you know, starting at around 27, something like that. So the Bronco Sport, I think is gonna have the most powerful engine in the class. It, does get, it is gonna have the 1.5 liter Dragon engine. I love that name, although it doesn't seem right on a three cylinder. 180 horsepower, 177 pounds feet of torque, pound feet of torque, excuse me. The second engine, the 2.5 liter EcoBoost, it's a turbo, of course. It's a four cylinder, 250 horsepower, 275 pound feet of torque. That should make it the fastest or the most powerful vehicle in the class and give it the most torque by a wide uh, margin. So I think that's uh, definitely an advantage that Ford is going to have there. Also, it's probably gonna have a hybrid engine as well. In the Escape, we've got a 2.5 liter hybrid engine with an electric motor making a combined total of 198 horsepower and pretty good fuel mileage. I don't remember what that actually is right now. And an eight speed automatic transmission. So the wheelbase, this is anyone's guess. Is it gonna be longer or shorter than the Escape? I don't know. The Escape is 106.7 inches. I'm gonna guess the Bronco is gonna be something 104 to 105, something like that. I'm gonna guess that it's gonna be fairly short in length. My guess is 174 inches. Compare that to the Ford Escape, 180. Again, it's just a guess right now. We're, we're gonna find out pretty soon. Now, I did take a look at the Land Rover Discovery Sport, not in the same price class. It starts at $37,800. It has a two liter engine with 246 horsepower. So I'm not really gonna do a comparison of that because it's really not in the same class. Obviously, Land Rover is a more luxurious vehicle. 
it's got a lot more options and features. It's basically aimed at a different audience than I think the Bronco is. But as you get into higher trims of the Bronco, which are clearly gonna go beyond $40,000 in my opinion, I think maybe it's gonna compete with the base Land Rover Discovery Sport. Those are the objective numbers in terms of the subjective things. We don't know how the Bronco is gonna drive. We have seen the interior and I think we have an idea of what the base is gonna be look like. looking like. It's pretty, pretty chunky, it's pretty truck-like. It's definitely not, this particular one is not that luxurious looking to me. If you wanna support the channel, go visit the store or just subscribe for more Bronco and other content. I will see you super soon.